Protectionism by Michael Pope. Hello. I'm going to talk about protectionism. But why is there a need when we have a global village? I'll tell you why. There are nine reasons. The first reason being protect infant industries. This is the idea that uh, it protects those countries in the process of industrialization to strengthen it up, then open up a stronger industry on the world. Next step, protection of geriatric industries. These are where industries that need to restructure and cut costs, uh, primarily developed countries losing their comparative advantage. Uh, an example would be because of new steel trade laws. Another reason would be employment protection. Cheap imports threaten domestic employment. Another one. Prevent dumping, which is uh, the most justifiable reason of protectionism. Dumping is where countries sell goods and services below their production costs. This is against the rules of the World Trade Organization. Another one would be to correct current account deficit. That is when uh, if M decreases, X minus M increases. Another reason would be to counter worse health and safety environmental regulations. This is the idea that poor health and safety results in lower production costs, therefore need to counter because they cannot compete with so low prices. Strategic reasons. Trade embargoes is an example of uh, the one that comes to mind would be the Cuban Missile Crisis. That was a trade embargo. Right, next one. Raising tax revenues. Well, that, that's quite simple and speaks for itself. So, next one. Retaliation. Where the whole world suffers if USA and China do not trade. Right, let's identify the types of restrictions on free trade. As you can see, we have a tariff diagram. It's a simple micro, well, same as the micro. Uh, demand supply diagram, but with few alterations. Uh, one being supply is domestic supply, not normal supply. P world represents the price of the good, you know, and P world plus tariff is the price of the good uh, with the tariff added to it. Now, as you can see on the graph, supply and demand, S1, D1, has been restricted and moved to S2, D2 because of the tariff. You see two triangles. These are deadweight welfare loss triangles and cannot be allocated to anyone. You also see a yellow box in the middle. That, re that is represented as M2, which is uh, demand to minus supply to times the tariff. This is your government revenue. Right. Evaluation. There are nine, sorry, eight evaluation points. One, increase in price uh, leads to a decrease in consumer surplus. Two, increase in price leads to an increase in producer surplus. Three, government tax revenue is the revenue from tax, M2 times T, which is shown as the yellow shaded area. Four, dead weight welfare loss, the two triangles, it goes to nobody. It is that part of the welfare which cannot be allocated to anybody post tariff. Five, the effects of the tariff is dependent to the size of the tariff. This is a magnitude argument. Six, the elasticity of the domestic supply and the elasticity of demand affects the size of the tariff. Seven, in some trading blocks, for example, the EU, Common external tariff levels need to be agreed by consensus by its members. It is not a flexible economic weapon. 8. Because of the deadweight welfare loss, a tariff is an inefficient tax. Right, let's identify the types of restrictions on free trade. You've got quotas, a restriction on the quantity of goods allowed to be imported. 
This is similar to tariffs, for it raises prices, restricts the supply, squeezes imports in terms of quantity. There is no tariff tax revenue to the government from quotas. Government gives a subsidy to domestic suppliers to reduce cost of production. An example being the French government subsidized Air France to help. Um, Air France is not owned by the French government, though. Right. Administrative regulation. These could be health and safety standards, labor standards, environmental standards. These standards cost money. A developed country says to developing world, we are not going to agree to your imports because of poor standards. Um, well, it can be seen as a moral, moral proposition if TNCs did not go into these developing world to exploit. This is hypocrisy because they actually do go into these developing worlds to exploit. Right, identify potential effects on protectionist policies on resource allocation. Right, you have trade barriers distort comparative advantage and reduce specialization, leading to lower world output and lower living standards. This is inefficient resource allocation. Consumers in the concept of protectionism will reduce the choice. Seen through the tire diagram, higher prices results in less demand, so higher prices is less choice. If government is deploying tariffs, quotas or subsidies, then producers will have less incentive to become more efficient because they are protected by the government. Lastly, it is difficult to remove once these uh, trade barriers are up. They are difficult to remove because they will result in an adverse effect. Thank you for your time. If I have missed any uh, points, I'm sure Sunil would be glad to teach everyone. Thank you.